is something I like to call tactical nutrition. Is that already trademarked? I don't know. This is your perfect marathon fueling strategy. But first, hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss the perfect hydration plan and part three of carbo loading. If, if you guys even want that, I don't know. Comment down below. Energy gels. Why? Your body stores about 90 minutes worth of activity in the form of carbohydrates in your muscles. So you can only fund about 90 minutes of exercise if you're not going to take anything during your marathon. But if you wait until that 90 minute point, it's going to be a struggle. <laughs> To finish, you've already passed the Rubicon into bonking territory because it takes about 10 minutes to access the carbs in your fuel once you take it into your body. You don't reach peak energy availability until 20 to 30 minutes after you've ingested whatever you're choosing to take. You should take your first energy gel within the first 30 minutes of your race. And there's some research that it might even be beneficial to take an energy gel in the 10 to 15 minute window before the race even starts. Always test everything before race day. No new tricks on race day. No new brands. No new anything. Don't learn that lesson the hard way. I am helping you right now. No matter if you're elite or recreational, there's kind of a bare minimum amount of carbs that you want to have to get through a marathon and that's 30 grams of carbohydrates per hour if you're more elite you're going to need more carbs because you're going at a higher intensity you're burning through those carbs quickly so if you're a faster marathoner try to aim for 60 grams to 90 grams of carbohydrates per hour. You're going to likely have to train your gut for that because that's a lot of a lot of energy gels. It's about three energy gels an hour. Taking it with water. Always make sure that you take your energy gels with water to not only better tolerate it, but to absorb the energy faster if you take it with water. To recap, within the first 30 minutes, you're taking your first energy gel. Then you're going to continue taking an energy gel every 30 to 45 minutes, depending on when the stations are and map it out, practice it, all that stuff to make sure that you can tolerate this much eating while you're running. Let's talk about caffeine in energy gels. Yes, there can be a benefit if you're going to hit the target that could potentially see a benefit in your body. If that makes sense, you need at least three milligrams of caffeine per kilogram of your body weight in total over the course of race day. And make sure again that you test all this. Caffeine is one of those things. Maple syrup, because that's a thing. That's a thing that I love. Maple syrup is sucrose, which is glucose plus fructose, and it's absorbed slightly slower than a typical energy gel. So just bear that in mind. It's not as efficient as a normal energy gel, but cost benefit analysis, drink maple syrup for two hours and call it exercise. <laughs> Make sure that your fuel source has electrolytes if you're not taking a sports drink. And also one more thing, if you are implementing the advice that I gave you today and you're finding that it's just not working when it comes to gut upset, you can train your gut to develop more sugar transporters in your gut the more you expose your body to handling that sugar so if you first start out and you can't take one and a half to two energy gels an hour to hit that 30 grams per hour of carbs know that you can train your body to get there also if you're dehydrated if you're not drinking enough water that also makes you more susceptible to feeling gut upset so just some things to keep in mind for the best race on marathon race day that wraps up this video subscribe look at how could you not want to click that subscribe? Baby Kirsten with her little sun hat. You're not going to click that? You're a monster. At the very least, you can watch my creatine video.